evidence warning of a growing Gulf of Mexico supervolcano that may be preparing for eruption. A disturbing new Ministry of Defense report circulating in the Kremlin today states that scientific analysis provided to the Naval Main Command, NMC, from its research vessel RFS Viktor Leonov, NATO designation SSV 175, this past week provide growing evidence that the bizarre, mysterious, high temperature readings emanating from the Gulf of Mexico might indeed be linked to a deep underwater supervolcano that may be preparing to erupt, but at the very least has violently altered normal global weather patterns. According to this report, the RFS Viktor Leonov, the CCB-175, is a research intelligence vessel whose main mission for the past four years has been to monitor the growing abnormalities being, uh, being uh, uh, evidenced on the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream has changed. This is a warm and swift ocean, Atlantic Ocean current that originates in the Gulf of Mexico, stretches to the tip of Florida, and then follows the eastern coastlines of the United States and Newfoundland before crossing the Atlantic Ocean, and whose normality of flow is critical to sustaining weather patterns over the entirety of, of the European continent. And if this anything goes wrong with this, the weather of Europe changes drastically. Being its mission to monitor the Gulf Stream in 2014-2015, research provided by the RFS Victor Leonov CCB-175 confirmed the 2015 evidence that this Atlantic Ocean current was slowing down faster than ever, and whose 2017 mission further confirmed Western scientists finding the, that drastic cooling in the North Atlantic was beyond their worst fears, and who gravely warned that this collapse of the Gulf Stream poses threats to life as we know it. During its current 2018 mission to monitor the Gulf Stream, the last year, U.S. officials correctly said was not a threat, but in the Russia hysteria, West today has been wetting their nappies about. The report details the RFS Viktor Leonov CCB-175 recorded the waters off the South American nation of Ecuador on January 5th, disappearing from their coastline, followed three days later on January 8th by the waters disappearing off North America, Florida coastline, and that was followed within 24 hours on January 9th by a massive 7.6 magnitude earthquake occurring in the Caribbean Sea adjacent to the Gulf of Mexico. So we, this is just terrible news when we see water disappearing. It means that it has to go somewhere. It's going somewhere. And uh, it means the earth is opening below and uh, receiving the waters, the ocean waters. This is amazing. Now, quickly following these mysterious events in and around the Gulf of Mexico, the report says the Gulf Stream disruption is caused, caused precipitating violent weather to strike the entire of the European continent, with thousands of trees being felled in Moscow by freak snowstorms, deadly gales sweeping across Belgium, Germany, and Netherlands as parts of the United Kingdom, paralyzing snow falling as far south as the Mediterranean even in coast of Italy, and we see Rome inundated by snow. Very unusual weather. But those but whose record cold onslaught suddenly stopped a fortnight ago when the entire weather system over Europe suddenly switched direction and headed towards North America. Most concerning about these events to the doctor scientists about the Viktor Leonov CCB-175 research ship monitoring the Gulf Stream, where the rapidly rising, then rapidly cooling temperatures of the entire Gulf of Mexico, with one location hitting the unprecedented high of over 55 degrees Celsius, which is, as hot as an oven, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Then returns to seasonal normal five days later on March 10th, just, just two days ago. 
with the average sea surface temperatures of the Gulf of Mexico never falling between 23 degrees Celsius at 73 degrees Fahrenheit over the winter for the first time on record last year and whose dead zone, quote unquote, has grown to its largest size in recorded history, doctor scientists aboard the research vessel Victor Leonov assert that the Western excuse for the mysterious events being climate change cannot be true as no evidence has been presented by them to make this connection. Unlike their Western counterparts, so Russia doctor scientists when confronted by such mysteries like what is now occurring in the Gulf of Mexico, look backwards in time to our Earth's most ancient stories and myths to see if parallels can be drawn to what's happening now. And that led an examination of the Maya people who in ancient times inhabited this entire region, even stretching it into the American states of Florida and Georgia. As documented by Carleton College researcher Lyndon DeSalvo in 2008, research paper titled Bleeding Earth, Volcanoes as the Proto Prototypical Mountains in Maya Cosmological Past, end quote. The report says the Mayan people, stories and legends of their past speak of the entire Gulf of Mexico as being the place where mountains came from and also disappeared into, and whose only modern time explanation of this is someone describing the activities of a volcanic caldera, that is a large cauldron-like depression that forms following the evacuation of a magma chamber reservoir in the supervolcano eruption. Disregarding the Maya people ancient legends, stories and myths that the Gulf of Mexico could indeed be a massive volcanic caldera, Western scientists have long sought to discover as to how come it came to uh, the, being the shape it is. It looks like a caldera on the map as we can see. With the latest attempt being made in 2002 when American geologists Michael Stanton published a speculative essay suggesting an impact origin for the Gulf of Mexico that all that all global geologists quickly rejected for its not having any credibility. They were asking, and it was still an enigma, why does it look like a hole? Coming closer to the Mayan people and ancient st stories was noted American geologist Dr. David Pryor, who while doing research at Louisiana State University, became the first scientist to document volcanic eruptions were in need, indeed occurring in the Gulf of Mexico. Yes, there were volcanic eruptions in the Gulf of Mexico and the discovery of which he wrote about in 1989 scientific research paper titled Evidence for Sediment Eruption on Deep Sea Floor, Gulf of Mexico. Building on Dr. Pryor's scientific proof of volcanic eruptions occurring in the Gulf of Mexico, the asphalt volcanoes, detailed in 2003, the asphalt volcanoes, which were never heard of before, were found forming in these waters too, and that led to the massive effort all around the globe to remap all the world's oceans to discover just how many underwater volcanoes there are. And when completed in 2014, revealed thousands of underwater mountains and extinct volcanoes that were previously not known of. This past May 2017, the first in history detailed seafloor map of the Gulf of Mexico was finally released by uh, the Americans and whose stunning findings revealed its deep water seafloor was dominated by canyons, ridges, and faults, some of whose fault lines spread to the ancient Jackson, Mississippi volcano, and with many believing that further discoveries would soon link, link the entire southeastern United States to the feared Trans-Mexican Volcano Belt. Going by the events occurring in Mexico between the years 1854 and, and 1875, when the Gulf of Mexico region was shaken by eight powerful earthquakes over seven magnitude, it's important to note that during this series of earthquakes in that region, they were coincided by the last volcanoes to ever erupt in the southeastern United States. And that inclined the 20th of June, 1857 volcanic eruption in Georgia and to September, 1866, 
volcanic eruption of the Gulf of Mexico coast of Florida and the 18 March 1874 volcanic eruption in North Carolina. Yes, a volcano in Georgia. Can you imagine? Though firm conclusions as to if a supervolcano caldera is awakening under the waters of the Gulf of Mexico cannot be made until further scientific discoveries, should that be in fact true, no scientific measures are yet established as to determine when it could erupt, and that could measure in the tens, hundreds, or even thousands of years. But with the American people being the most unprepared for such a catastrophe in modern world, and as evidenced by tens of millions of these supposed educated people not even knowing that their homeowner's insurance doesn't cover them for earthquake and or volcanic damage, thus leaving them all at a risk of losing everything because they don't know that earthquake insurance has to be bought separately.